Roma Wines presents Suspense. Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud. Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the Man in Black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Sonny Tufts in a suspense play that tells of a murder in Boston and of perilous adventure in Vermont's snow-covered hills. And so with Cat and Mouse and with the performance of Sonny Tufts as John Guthrie, an engineer, we again hope to keep you in Suspense. W1QXL, W1QXL, W1QXL. This is W1, RBX calling W1QXL, W1QXL. This is WIR, Montcar, Vermont, calling and standing by. W1RBX, W1RBX. This is W1QXL in Boston returning. Hiya, Guthrie, how you been? Signal's clear, good signal. Come in. W1QXL, W1QXL, W1RBX back. Hello, Lockwood. I'm fine. Signal's good up here. I got lots to tell you. Been trying to get in touch with you for the last couple of hours. Where you been? Out to dinner with Valentine? Go ahead. Sorry, Guthrie. I haven't seen Val today. She hasn't answered her phone. Guess she's awful tired of picking it up and hearing me on the other end proposing. Anyhow, I've been working hard. Oh, I had a little excitement here at the laboratory an hour or so ago. Thought we had a prowler on the grounds. But guess it was a false alarm. Nerves, I guess. What's your news, Guthrie? I've got a bit for you myself, but let's hear yours first. Go ahead. Okay. Well, as far as I'm concerned, kiddo, you can set up a date for demonstration for the Army Signal Corps and the Naval Ordnance people just as soon as you like. We're in the clear now for keeps. I got the last bug out of the screen this morning, and it ought to make the prettiest little image you ever saw. And if the brass hats put the steam on, I don't see why it shouldn't be in there fighting in a couple of months. Now, let's hear about you. Go ahead. Boy, that sounds great. Hold it, Guthrie. Something going on here. Uh, keep listening. I'll be back in a second. Who is it? Who's out there? Who's there? Get out from there or I'll shoot. Come out. Stop. Stop. What is it, Lockwood? Howard, what's the shooting? Is that you coughing? Lockwood, is that you? Go ahead. Hello. Hello, Guthrie. I saw him that time. Almost got him with my rifle. Wonder what that guy can want. Well, I know one thing he's got, and that's a sore throat. Boy, did you hear that call? Go ahead. I'm worried, Lockwood. Somebody must be getting wise to what we've got. We'd better arrange for more protection around the lab. Well, you've heard my say of it. How are you getting on with the blueprints? Go ahead. Did you hear me, Howard? Go ahead. W1QXL, W1QXL. What's happened? Come back in. Go ahead. Hello. Uh, this is W1QXL. I, uh, I'm going away. Uh, I'm going skiing. I'm going skiing up in Sunbury, Vermont at the Phoenix Hotel. The Phoenix. Have you got that, Frank? Frank? What's all this about you going skiing? You've never been on skis in your life. Besides, I'm coming up to see you, and it's important. We'll get together now in the blueprints, okay? At the Phoenix Hotel. Go ahead, Frank. <laughs> What's this gag calling me Frank? What's going on? I hear voices behind you. Sounds like interference. You all right? I say, are you all right? I'm leaving here for Boston in the morning. I'll bring the whole works. No. No, don't. And don't contact Val. If anything happens to me, the man with a cough. The man with a cough. The cough. The uh... Lockwood, what's up? You still there? Come in. Come in, Lockwood. Lockwood, come in. Lockwood, go ahead. W1QXL. W1QXL. This is W1RBX calling. Go ahead. 
W1QXL. W1QXL. This is W1RBX. Go ahead. Tonight for suspense, Roma Wines bring you as star, Mr. Sonny Tufts, whom you have heard in the prologue to Cat and Mouse by Hugh Pentecost. Tonight's adventure in suspense. While the play's scene changes, let me describe another scene that might even now be taking place in the handsome cafe of the Hotel Nacional de Cuba in Havana. An American visitor has remarked to his Cuban host what great enjoyment the Cuban music and the dancing gives him. Gracefully, the Cuban host returns the compliment, saying, But your United States makes us a gift that gives great pleasure on many occasions. Your superb wine from the choice wine districts of your California. Your Roma wine. Yes, for a wine to give great enjoyment, it must have greatness of character. And it's this that has spread the fame of Roma wines to other lands. Why otherwise would these countries import Roma wines to be enjoyed as a rare luxury? How fortunate, then, are you who can enjoy any of the Roma wines' many different delicious wine types whenever you choose without additional charge for import duty, with no high shipping costs added to your small cost for Roma wines. Yet here is a quality so high it has won international recognition, quality coupled with costs so modest that Roma wines are America's largest selling wines. Why not make your own taste test of these good Roma wines and discover for yourself the fine wine qualities acclaimed by wine experts of many lands? I'll spell out the name for you. R-O-M-A. Roma wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our soundstage our star, Sonny Tufts, as engineer John Guthrie in Cat and Mouse, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Well, that's about all the facts we know, Miss Ames. Yes. The bruises on uh, Mr. Lockwood's head were a little hard to explain, as you pointed out. It was the explosion that killed him. Uh, that seems to be fairly... Dr. Vaughan, uh... yes. The explosion may have been what actually was the final cause of his death. I take a doctor's word like you for that. But those marks and bruises. Suppose he'd been beaten, hit over the head in order to make him... In order to make him what? But I, I can't say any more, Dr. Vaughan. I, I don't know quite what I'm talking about anyhow, I guess. You see, Howard had been experimenting with something. He had a collaborator. Collaborator? Yes. I don't know who... Howard would never... Well, he used to talk to this other man on shortwave. They both had shortwave sets. Radio hams, you call them. Those amateur radio operators. Yes. Well, I must go. Oh, let me help you with your coat, Dr. Vaughn. Oh, thank you. I must say that after talking to you, I'm partly convinced, Miss Ames, but uh, murder is a pretty difficult thing to prove, especially in this case. And uh... Oh, excuse me. Oh, uh, I'll be going, then. I, uh... Hello? Yes? Who? Mr. Guthrie. Well, oh, I see. Well, if you were his friend, I... Where, in the drugstore? Yes, I'll wait. Just come right up to apartment 15E. Yes. Goodbye. Thank you again for your trouble, Dr. Vaughan. Well, please feel that you can call... <coughs> call... Oh, I'll get you some water. <coughs> no, 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 don't, don't bother <clears throat> Too many cigars. Bad larynx. I'm awfully sorry. <coughs> I'll say goodbye. You sure you're all right? No, it's perfect. Don't worry. I'll keep in touch with you, Miss Ames. Yes. Well, goodbye now. Oh, just a minute. Hello. You must be Valentine Ames. Yes, I am. I'd recognize you anywhere. Well, just, uh, are you Mr. Guthrie? Just <laughs> yes. throw your things in that chair there. You're just as I pictured you. Lockwood spoke of you so often. How it spoke of me? Do well, you? Well, you were engaged to be married, weren't you? No, I was fond of him, but, <laughs> but never he, that way. He told me, that is, he said... Then you were his collaborator. Oh, please, Mr. Guthrie, you can trust me. I need help. They all say his death was an accident. The coroner, the newspapers, the police. But I know it wasn't. 
How do they say it happened? Oh, an explosion in his laboratory. Chemicals he was using in his experiments. Nonsense, explosion. There wasn't anything more explosive in Lockwood's lab than a package of matches. Then you were his collaborator. Oh, please trust me. Lockwood was murdered. I know it. You think so too, then? Yes. Well, then our job is to prove he was murdered. No, I'm sorry, Val. There's something more important that comes first. When they kill Lockwood, they stole half of our... Well... Your invention? But half an invention is worthless. But I have the other half. In other words... Yeah. I'm next. We can count on that. But they don't know who you are. Maybe not yet. Hmm. That was why Lockwood kept calling me Frank when he was talking to me near the end. He didn't want to give my name away to them. And you've no idea who they are? Just something we could start on? It was just one thing. That night, the night he was killed, we were talking a shortwave, and he'd been bothered by a prowler. He spoke of it. Well, I even heard the fellow in the air. He was... Oh, that phone. Excuse me a second. Hello? Yes? Oh, Dr. Borberg. Yes, it's nice of you to call me back, and thank you so much for sending Dr. Vaughn to see me. He certainly is... Dr. Vaughn. But you sent him to see me about Dr. Lockwood. About Dr. Edmund Vaughn? You're positive? I see. Well, thank you anyway. Bye. What's up? Well, someone just before you came, and Dr. Edwin Vaughn said he was with the coroner's office. He called on me. And the coroner's office never heard of him. Is that it? Never. Uh-huh. Who was he? I mean, what did he look like? Would you recognize him if you saw him again? Well, he was just a middle-aged fellow. Poor man had a terribly bad cough, one of the really hacking coughs. A cough? Yes. It's the same one. He came to Howell's lab the night of the killing. I heard him. You sure? Positive. You see, it fits. He was looking for me. Figured I'd come here to see you. He wants my half an invention. Well, Val, they need what I've got, and I've got to get back what they've stolen, so... Where are you going? Skiing. What? I'm going back to Vermont to go skiing. <laughs> I'll send you a card from the Phoenix Hotel. Next stop is Sunbury, Vermont. Sunbury! Bring me an orange aid, Porter. <sighs> well, hello. You're new up here. I uh, beg your pardon? You're going to the Phoenix Hotel, of course. It gets so you know a skiing fan when you see one. I know most all the Phoenix crowd. This must be your first trip to the Phoenix, huh? Yeah, it is. Hmm. Name's O'Brien. John Guthrie. Hmm. Excuse me. Do they serve drinks in this lounge car? Yes, they do. Yeah, you're new, too. Well, yes, I've only been in the States a few weeks. Oh, no. I mean new to our weekend skiing contingent. Skiing contingent? Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. I'm O'Brien. This is Mr. Guthrie. What did you say your name was? Well, I'm... Uh, uh... Thanks, Porter, thanks. And uh, bring me a couple more cigars, will you? Here, uh, take one of mine while you're waiting, Mr. O'Brien. Oh, thank you. Now, that's what I like about the Phoenix crowd. They're sociable. Everybody pals with everybody else. <laughs> Sounds very pleasant. Yes, I suppose so. Well, Mr., um, uh, Well, anyway, you wait. By Monday, everyone in the place will be calling you by your first name. Oh, really? Well, I guess I'd better be getting back to my compartment. Very happy to have met you, gentlemen. See you later. <coughs> Weird duck. Unsociable life. Now I always say, you take a fellow that won't mix. Be quiet a minute. What's the matter with you, Mr. Guthrie? You look like you'd seen a ghost. Good evening, Mr. Guthrie. I trust you're feeling refreshed now, sir. Yeah, three hours sleep and a long walk was just what I needed. Any messages for me? No, sir. Good evening, Mr. O'Brien. Hello there, hello. Ah, there you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. Want to introduce you around to some of the folks here. Well, uh, thanks, Mr. O'Brien. I would kind of like to get acquainted. Why, sure. Be sociable. You see the old lady in the wheelchair? That's Mrs. Garvey. Mrs. Garvey, eh? Yeah. They're new here, too. Legs paralyzed, poor soul. Always sits and knits. The husky man's her husband. Uh, well, hello there, folks. Uh, hello, Irishman. Well. Ah, feels good here. So you're a newcomer? Uh, only one of them, yeah. And uh, this sweet soul, Mr. Guthrie, is Mrs. Garvey. 
<laughs> Excuse my not shaking hands. I'm all tied up in this ball of wool. When you can't walk, you compensate by keeping the hands over busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very considerate of you to make me feel at home here, Mrs. Garvey and Mr. Garvey. Mm, surprised a strong young man like you isn't in the army. Really, Daddy. You have to excuse him, Mr. Guthrie. Nosy and fresh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's no harm done. Uh, see, I'm an engineer and they've deferred me. Theory is, I'm doing my share as is, I suppose. Yeah. I'm a promoter myself. Here, Daddy. Hold out your hands. That's it. Now, don't wiggle or my wool will slip. And I'm not in the army because I'm too old. Took advantage of the over 38 law. I'm 59. <laughs> <laughs> He's a card, isn't he? <laughs> sure is. Uh, just what is a promoter, Mr. Garvey? Careful, Daddy. Those knitting needles almost stuck you then. They're special needles, Mr. Guthrie. Sharp. Why, they could cut ice or pierce wood. Or kill a man. Yes. Yes, I'll be careful, Mother. So you're an engineer, Mr. Guthrie. I knew an engineer. Fine boy. Oh, I remember him. He was a dear boy. Anybody I know? No. I thought I'd try to get him to come up here. Was working on an experiment I was very much interested in. He wouldn't do business with me, though. Yeah? Now, bring your hands together, Daddy. That's a good boy. Fine. Daddy has such big, strong hands, yet they're so gentle. Well, the boy's dead now. Met with an accident, I think. Really? Uh, what did you say his name was? Howard Lockwood. Yes, Lockwood. He uh, had a collaborator I've been trying to locate. He and I could really have a long talk. Say, by the way, Guthrie, have you seen that bird, uh, the unsociable one we came up in the train with? No, uh, I haven't. He's probably a big businessman. He seems so nervous. I tell you, it doesn't pay. Yeah, be sociable. Business can always wait. Definitely. <laughs> when I see how little you fellas get out of life, I thank heavens I have the sense to retire. Uh, how long have you been retired, Mr. O'Brien? Mm, be four years in June. Mm -hmm. You in business for yourself? No, no. I was a professional man. Oh, I see. Uh, medicine? No. Detective. I was with the FBI. FBI. <laughs> Come in. Well, well, Guthrie, come in, come in. Feel just like a nice sociable talk. Sit down, sit down. Mr. O'Brien, I'm in trouble and I need expert help. And you are an FBI man. You can help me. Uh-oh. I was afraid of that. I'm sorry, Guthrie. I'm retired. Too old for the game. You get a hold of the Boston office. They'll get someone up to help you in a jiffy. Call Jack Porter. He's in charge now. They'll mention my name. But there's no time now. You see, Boston is six hours from here. I need help right now. Oh, take it easy, boy. Relax. I suppose you're another engineer with some gadget that's going to win the war. That's a familiar one. Mr. O'Brien, this is serious. There's a murder in this hotel, and if I don't get him, he'll get me. Now, now, take it easy. If you'll just give me a hand. You know, I felt there was something going on here this weekend. Things, were, things weren't sociable like they usually are. Mm hmm What have you noticed? Mm, nothing in particular. Just people seem to act funny. You take that Garvey and his old wife, and that bird with a cough that came up on the train with us. What's he up to, eating his meals in his room? Look, will you help me, Mr. O'Brien? I do have an invention, as it happens, and... Oh, excuse me a minute. Hello? Mr. Guthrie? Yes, he's here. Hmm. The gentleman in 421. Right now. Very well. Goodbye. It's for you. Party in 421 wants you to step in and see him. That's him. That fake Dr. Vaughn. Well, this is it. And you refuse to help. Oh, now, look, uh, I'd like to, I guess, but after all... The... All right, O'Brien, but look, just this. 421 is right down the hall. And if I'm not back in ten minutes, will you knock on the door? Oh, that much, uh, I'll do for you. John. Well, Valentine, what are you doing here? We agreed that you... Oh, John. Open your door quickly before we're seen together. Look, Val, I've got something important to do. Wait in my room for me. If I can only find a key. The door's open. It's funny. I locked it. Look! The room's been searched. My papers, the pillows, my trunk. Oh, John, they know you. Where is it? You didn't bring the blueprints with you here. I'm not that dumb. Well, it's gone. What? My gun. Oh, John, I'm afraid. I feel as if I'd known you for a long time. My dear. Well, you know I love you, don't you? John, we, we, we shouldn't talk about that now. But, you see, I've been in love with what I think you are. I've only known you for two days, and... 
What are you trying to ask me, John? Why you came when we agreed that you shouldn't. Because I was afraid that you... And why I find you hiding near my door and find the door unlocked. And I had locked it only ten minutes ago, and then I come into my room and I find this. Oh, John, don't. Please don't. I came because I wanted to help you. I felt that if you were in danger, it wasn't right for me to stay home. Safe. Not knowing. Yeah. I'm sorry, Val. I trust you. Look, stay here. I'm going down the hall. Somebody's waiting Oh, don't go, me. John. Don't, please. I'm afraid for you. You got a gun, Val? Yes, I thought I might need it. Well, give it to me. Now, kiss me. Oh, John, I... Wait here. If I'm not back in ten minutes, get the police. Where are you going? Room 421 to talk to a man about his cough. I'm going with you. This is his room. I'm going in with you. You're staying outside. Step back. Don't let him see you. Open up. His door is open, too. <gasps> They're on the rug. The body. It's Dr. Vaughn. He's dead. Look. Look at the gun. He's holding it. He, he killed himself. You mean he's supposed to look as if he killed himself? He was shot in the back of the head. A bit too neat. What do you mean? That gun in his hand. It's mine. Then if he wasn't the murderer, who was he? Oh, John, the gun... They'll think that you... Shh, take it easy. That gun may come in handy. Come in. Well. Oh, Brian, look here. What? This gun's mine. It's a plot to frame me. What? That's not your killer, Guthrie. That's Hillary Lawrence of Scotland Yard. Assigned to this case because his government, like ours, is keenly interested in your invention. I should have listened to you before, Guthrie. You know about it then? I checked. Called FBI office in Boston. Talked to Porter. Yes, your Dr. Vaughn was Hillary Lawrence of Scotland Yard. He was the one you heard in Lockwood's lab the night he was killed. How... He must have got a little too close in the tail of the real killers. Mr. Garvey was... Well, I really don't know enough to talk. I better shut my big mouth. But I think I know. You know the killer? No, but I have no proof. Without proof, Guthrie, you'll be held for the murder of Lawrence. Mm, that's obvious. We've got to get our other evidence before someone finds the body. Yeah, you know, there must be a hideout around here they operate from. There's a cabin about a mile to the left from the top of the ski jump. I saw it one day when I got lost. I've got a funny hunch it might be the place. If we can get there and find something involving them before the hotel people find this body and arrest you, we'll be... Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's go. Come on back to my room, Val. See you downstairs in five minutes, O'Brien. But if we don't find proof, John, what then? Then we get murdered or get held for murder. <laughs> Cabin's dark. Yeah, one of these keys must fit. Ah, that one does it. Softly now. Mr. Guthrie, I'll take Miss Ames's gun. You're too impulsive. Thanks. Well, there's no one here. Draw the shade, please. I'd better keep a lookout on the road. Someone may come. That's a good idea. Now, this is what I call a real sociable evening. Look, a note. And it's addressed to me. Well, we're in the right place then. Read it. Guthrie, 200000 in cash for your blueprints, and you can get the cash first, wherever you designate, with no questions asked as to what government gets them. Why Sir, those... Sir, calmly, my boy. You don't have the prints here, do you? Uh, no, uh, they're, uh, they're uh, in a safety vault, and my name is San Francisco. What's, what's that there, that panel? It's a radio rig, sending and receiving. Someone's coming. Who? Quick, turn off that light. Take a look, John, here, through the window. It's Garvey, and he's alone. Alone? Are you sure? Where'd he put that wife of his? Take another look. Uh, he's alone, all right. I knew she was a phony. She does too much knitting. I wonder where she is. All right, Miss Ames, out you go, quickly. Get to the foot of the road before he does. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's your car, understand? Yes, yes. You're lost, looking for a way back to the Phoenix. Delay him from coming in here. Right. I'll go outside. You search the place, O'Brien, with Val. No, let the girl go. Her best weapon is her charm. Hurry now. Stall them as long as you can. Good luck. Don't worry. I can see them from here. Look at it. Short wave. Yeah. With this outfit, Garvey could hear Lockwood and me talking over our work. Yeah. Pretty clever operator, I'd say. Can you see Val? Yeah. She's getting near him now. Brave girl, that one. The best. There she is. He's seen her. Let me have a look. See them? Over my finger. Between that row of trees. Yeah. She's talking to Garvey now. She'll stall him. Yeah. Hey, come on, O'Brien. Let's start searching his Wait place. a minute. Wait a minute. 
Look, they're coming this way. The two of them. Well, I should have known. Val? Oh, no, it can't be. Sorry, Guthrie, but you're seeing right. The girl's with Garvey. But she loves me. I know it. She's honest. I swear it. They're coming up the path. You stand behind the door. I'll stand up on the balcony and cover them from behind with a gun. You all set, Guthrie? All set. You spring out on them as they close the door, and I'll cover you from here. Val, Garvey, duck. He's got the gun. Above. Oh, 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 my arm. O'Brien. All of you reach. Don't stoop for that gun, Guthrie. Up with your arms. Three of you are going to join the late Mr. Lockwood. The girl and Mr. Garvey of the FBI who poked his nose in the butt too far. You're out of your mind, O'Brien. What will you get by killing us? I've got the information you want, and if I'm dead, you'll never get it. I'm fighting for my life now, not your invention. With you three out of the way, I've got a chance. A fire in this lovely cabin will do the job nicely. Now get into that closet, all of you. Get started. You're missing one, O'Brien, my wife. I'm not worrying about that. Drop uh... your gun, Mr. O'Brien. That point you feel in your back is my knitting needle. Drop it. Remember, it can crack ice, pierce wood, or kill a man. Okay, Mrs. Garvey. Certainly nice to see you again. Uh, nice job, Guthrie. You tipped us off just in time. Sit down, Mother. You look tired. You must be standing behind the kitchen door for an hour. Look here. You, just you, be you... quiet, Mr. O'Brien. Formerly of the FBI. Kicked out for improper conduct, he was. The service has had its eye on you ever since, my friend. Yeah, you see, you made a slight error, O'Brien, when you said you'd call the porter of uh, the Boston FBI office. The outgoing lines from the hotel have been out of order since 5 o'clock. Oh, your arm, Daddy. Here, let me bandage it. You better get going and have it looked after. Oh, it's bleeding. I, I think I'm going to faint. Faint ahead, Val. I got a pair of arms that aren't doing a thing. <laughs> And so closes Cat and Mouse, starring Sonny Tufts, tonight's tale of Suspense. Mr. Tufts appeared through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures and will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, I Love a Soldier. Few spots in the globe boast the unique and perfect combination of nature's gifts, which makes possible truly good wine, wine which the whole world can enjoy. But wine experts will tell you that among these fortunate spots, none can surpass the vineyards of our own California. From these renowned California vineyards come Roma wines. Wines so perfect in flavor, so delightful, that they are enjoyed in many countries of the world. To us in America, Roma wines are an everyday treat. For we may buy them at an astonishingly low price, since we pay no import duties or expensive shipping costs. Do you enjoy a delicious tangy sherry? Well, tomorrow, treat yourself to a glass of Roma California sherry. We're sure you will agree that you have never tasted finer. With your first sip, you'll understand why Roma Wines are America's largest selling wines. I'll repeat the name, R-O-M-A, Roma Wine. Tomorrow, ask your dealer for your favorite type of Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is Sonny Tufts, and I hope you enjoyed our suspense play this evening. I know I had a good time. I'm looking forward to next week's show, and I know you must be, when that remarkable actress, the Academy Award winner, Madame Katina Paxino, will be the star of Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Katina Paxino in Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.